station now, it's completely different from when so I- One thing at a time, but not in a way- It's first and foremost an inside job. How, how best we could. I mean, I cut my own bang. Welcome back to The Next Level Woman. I'm your host, Dr. Lisa Hart. Let's talk about self-confidence and self-worth and self-image. They're quite similar with a lot of overlap, but there are some distinctions. But having low self-worth, poor self-image, and low self-confidence These are definitely problems worth solving because most people are challenged with their self-worth. Often it stems from their very childhood. People who didn't realize they were making a lasting impact on you, perhaps um, a parent, a sibling, a teacher, um, someone who had some influence over you said something. They may have been joking but it went right into your subconscious and has affected you. It's affected you ever since. So it's a problem worth solving, like I said, because you cannot outperform your self-image. You just, you can't. It's an internal glass ceiling, basically. So if you're not stuck with it, there are things you can do. And I have, I have a whole, um, daily um, checklist of things you can do um, to help increase your self-confidence, for instance, the self-confidence formula. And I'll go through that with you in a little while and tell you where you can get it. Another thing that the low self-worth can stem from is breaking promises to yourself. You make a commitment, you're going to do something, and you don't do it over and over again, and then you make a commitment, you really, you really do, you want to commit, you intend to commit, but your subconscious is like, yeah, right. It doesn't even try anymore. So you have to gain your own internal self-confidence, your respect, um, you know, that you say and, What you say and what you do are the same. So if you say you're going to do something, you do it. And if you say you're not going to do something, you don't do it. So let's start regaining that um, that internal self-confidence that you can trust yourself. And some things you can do for that are start making some very small promises promises for something you're going to do or promises for something you're not going to do and keep it no matter what. I mean, no matter what, if you get in bed and the thought pops into your mind that you didn't do that, you get out of bed and you do it. You put reminders, whatever it takes, but small, start small with things you can definitely do and then inch up from there. You must gain trust with yourself and then you can really make a commitment that will stick that you'll honor so it's really a brain and body feeling a trust um for a while i know you know i as a doctor you know always working long hours and if i you know if i wanted to do something i would commit but if something came up Well, you know, it's because I was busy being a doctor, but you can only, you know, you only do that a couple of times and already, you already know when you commit to something that it's probably not going to happen. So that's a terrible place to be in and you have to rehabilitate yourself from that. So seriously, try it. If you're not sure, Um, if you're not sure if that's affecting you or not, just do an exercise. Start by um, committing, making some small commitments and following through. And then just check in with yourself maybe once a week and see how are you doing? 
what's your self-image like? How's your self-confidence going? Um, another thing, especially, you know, as you get older, you go through life, um, you, some things, you know, you're going to lose some. You're going to win some, you're going to lose some. That's normal. It's good to get to the point where you see the loss as um, a learning experience. It's, like, it's almost, you know, it's part of your progress, really. So there is a phenomena, though, in neuroscience um, that I, I thought it was fascinating when I first heard it. Um, and it is that losses carry two times the weight of wins in your brain. So this causes us to focus on avoiding losses. So ask yourself, are you playing to win or are you playing not to lose? Because playing not to lose is going to keep you stuck, 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 stuck. You, you know, you're not engaging your heart. We talked about that heart driven you're not engaging your heart if you're just playing not to lose. If you're playing to win, you engage your heart, mm, there are no limitations. So keep that in mind. When you feel bad about something, you know, a loss, you keep thinking about the loss, just remember it's amplified, completely out of proportion to reality. And I am going to walk you through this self-confidence formula. Okay, now you can get this on my website. It's, um, it's on the first page of lisahart.com, L-I-E-S-A-H-A-R-T-E.com. I'll just go through these steps. There are five, five actions. Okay, first, when you read this to yourself, read it aloud once a day. Okay, and put full faith in it. Okay, so first, I know that I have the ability to achieve the object of my definite purpose in life. Therefore, I demand of myself persistent, continuous action towards this attainment. And I here and now promise to render, render such action. Second, I realize the dominating thoughts of my mind will eventually reproduce themselves in outward physical action and gradually transform themselves into physical reality. Therefore, I will concentrate my thoughts for 30 minutes daily upon the task of thinking of the person I intend to become, thereby creating in my mind a clear mental picture of that person. Third, I know through the principle of auto-suggestion, any desire that I persistently hold in my mind will eventually seek expression through some practical means of attaining the object back of it. Therefore, I will devote 10 minutes daily to demanding of myself the development of self-confidence. Fourth, I have clearly written down a description of my definite chief, chief aim in life, and I will never stop trying until I shall have developed sufficient self-confidence for its attainment. Fifth, I fully realize that no wealth or position can long endure unless built upon truth and justice. Therefore, I will engage in no transaction which does not benefit all human effects. I will succeed by attracting to myself the forces I wish to use and the cooperation of other people. I will induce others to serve me because of my willingness to serve others. I will eliminate hatred, envy, jealousy, selfishness, and cynicism by developing love for all humanity, because I know that a negative attitude toward others can never bring me success. I will cause others to believe in me because I will believe in them and in myself. I will sign my name to this formula, commit it to memory and repeat it aloud once a day with full faith that it will gradually influence my thoughts and actions so that I will become a self-reliant and successful person. There is a lot packed into that. So like I said, if you, if you want it, you can go to my website and get it. I recommend you print it out and you actually do what it says. You read it aloud once a day. And if you can be in front of a mirror 
that's even better. And then as you read it each day, you should start to commit it to memory. It should start to be part of your very fiber, really. And do what it says. Write out the things that it says. Do exactly what it says, and you will get results. You know, our aim is to eliminate the self-doubt, really fortify your self-image so that you can achieve anything and everything that you desire. If you have any questions, if you'd like to talk more, if you'd like some help, do reach out, lisa at lisaheart.com.